this picture on the internet. So if you don't notice, right here, we have a toilet in the kitchen. I thought that this was actually a pretty good idea, and I'm actually looking for a place to live right now. So I contacted my agent, and I asked her if she was aware of any houses that had a kitchen with this setup. However, she explained to me that there is a perfectly good reason why we don't put a toilet in the kitchen. We keep our toilet in the bathroom because our bathroom, it's where we poop, it's where we shower, it's where we do any of the dirty stuff. Our kitchen, on the other hand, that's where we cook, it's where we eat, it's where we store our food. So think about it. By keeping this toilet there is a major safety hazard. Our food could easily become contaminated. My guess is that right now you're wondering, what in the world does this have to do with WordPress? This actually has everything to do with WordPress. Because the person who designed this does not understand the concept of separation of concerns. And like the person who designed this kitchen, the person who wrote this code over here also does not understand the concept of separation of concerns. What's wrong here? Well, first of all, we've completely mixed all of our business logic and data wrangling in with our HTML. So, essentially, this small snippet of code here, you may think that's not a big deal. But when you're dealing with hundreds of thousands of lines of code, this could be a serious maintenance nightmare. PHP as a language has matured quite a bit. It used to have a bad reputation for being very difficult to work with and a lot of messy code. However, it's matured. WordPress, on the other hand, while it has come a long way, it still has some ways to go. And it unfortunately has a bad reputation among many developers. Over the past couple of years, Stack Overflow, I'm sure many of you are familiar with the site, did a survey. And the top, in the top 10 most dreaded uh, platforms to work with, WordPress ranked in the top 10, at least for the last two years. Some of that is not well deserved, but some of it, some of it, I believe, some of it's not well deserved, but some of it there are things that we as a community could do to write better code. There's many tools out there, and the one that I'm going to be focusing on in particular are templating engines. So today's talk, we will talk, we will learn number one, what are templating engines, and number two, why should you use one? But before we dive into that, let's go back to the concept of separation of concerns. Because this is really the problem that templating engines seek to solve. So, Wikipedia defines separation of concerns as a design principle for separating a computer program into distinct sections, such that each section addresses a separate concern. A concern is a set of information that affects the code of a computer program. Now, what this really means, if you really wanted to simplify this definition, we really just want to separate our business logic and our data from our views and our view logic. Now, there are many advantages to respecting separation of concerns. First of all, it's going to be a lot easier to debug our code. When we have our, our HTML and all our templating, uh, excuse me, HTML and CSS all mixed together, that makes it very, very difficult to find out where everything is getting output. One of the biggest advantages is we'll have much more efficient teams. If we can have one group of people that focus primarily on writing the HTML, writing the CSS, and any other anything else that applies to the UI, we'll be able to have another person who can focus 
partic specifically on wrangling the data out of WordPress, somebody who's just really good at that aspect. If you mix the two together, it's very, very difficult to have efficient teams and everybody's going to have to know basically everything about everything. The code base is going to be significantly more maintainable. Anybody who's been in the business for a long time knows that software is not a static thing. Our clients, they want features added. Sometimes uh, the nature of the business will change and we have to make updates. By, by separating our concerns, it's much easier to keep everything up to date and have a, uh, a good workflow. And finally, something that probably I know I myself don't know, do nearly as often as I would like, but you can write code that is testable. If you have HTML and you, if you have your HTML and your PHP all mixed in one file, your code is basically not going to be testable. And just to elaborate, by testable, I mean having the ability to write automated unit tests. So as this applies to WordPress, we want to think of our separation of concerns in this way. We have our hosts and WordPress core. This is essentially the data and business logic portion of our site. You know, posts are, are basically the basic unit of data. We can extend posts to, be, to have custom post types by having custom meta boxes and uh, custom taxonomies and terms. We can have a book custom code post type, a movie, an active, whatever you want. It's, it can do, it can be, the, there's no limit to this. Uh, core, on the other hand, is basically not particularly something, of course, that you're going to edit, but core also stores a lot of important data. Think about your site options, your site meta. Additionally, Core is responsible for performing redirects. So, like for example, if you have a user who tries to access the admin and they're not logged in, Core is what is responsible for redirecting them. Core knows which posts to load when for the, for the user. The other component of our separation of, our, of concerns is our templates. Templates can typically be found in your theme folder. So think about page.php, sidebar.php, single.php. Those are essentially your templates. Now the problem with these templates is that, this, is that basically because of the nature of PHP and because WordPress does not have anything in place to prevent you from doing so, separating out your concerns can sometimes be hard. Of course, Oftentimes we're under strict deadlines, so it's easy to get lazy with our code. But if we can have something in place, then we should certainly take advantage of that. So just to help understand the idea of separation of concerns, I invented this silly little template here. It's, um, you can render basically an alien. Now, on your left, we have, this here is all of our data. And on our right, we have a, basically just a blank template. By, by separating out our data, you'll see how it's much easier to basically reuse our code. So we can render one instance of this alien here. So we're transferring the data. His name is Bob. He has white hair, blue skin, green eyes, and he's happy. So. We can move on to another one, pass in a new set of data with basically, um, you know, same attributes, but we pass in a new set of data, and now we have a whole different alien here with green skin, white eyes, and he's sad. So now that hopefully we have some understanding of separation of concerns and what it actually means, we can dive into what a templating engine is doing and the problem that it's actually trying to solve. So, besides forcing you to respect separation of concerns, templating engines also offer some other very nice features. First of all,
first of all, you get cleaner syntax. Um, this is obviously optional, but I find, uh, not optional, but it's kind of the icing on the cake. I find that the syntax is significantly more readable than what you would normally have with your typical PHP syntax. And the other nice feature that we have is uh, something called template inheritance. So for those of you that have worked um, with programming languages such as PHP, um, you may know you may know the concept of object-oriented programming. Template inheritance is very similar. And basically, you're taking a base template and you can extend that template. So this way, you don't have to go and re reinvent the wheel over and over again. So. As um, PHP has several options for templating engines, and there's also some, some nice corresponding plugins for each of uh, for, that have been made by third parties. My personal favorite templating engine is Twig. It's the one that I use. All the examples are going to be done in Twig. I think part of the reason why I use Twig is because of the fantastic uh, WordPress plugin called Timber. Timber takes a lot of all the WordPress core functionality and basically prepackages them in a plugin that, so that you can actually use the Twig templating engine to get a lot of your WordPress core stuff in. Another popular templating engine is Blade. If any of you have used the PHP framework called Laravel, you might be familiar with it. Um, Blade is the templating engine that is built into that. It has many of the same features as Twig. It's very popular. And there is a WordPress plugin called Blade uh, with the same name, essentially. Haml is a multi-language plugin. It can be used with Ruby, JavaScript, and a bunch of others. I wasn't able to find a plugin in the repository, but there was a uh, I found a GitHub repository called WordPress Handle SAS. I actually didn't try it out, but maybe if somebody tries it out and they would like to comment on it, that would be appreciated. Mustache is a popular one. Um, basically, from what I understand, you don't, it actually allows zero logic in the templates. Some people like that, um, but for other people, that may not be so, such a good thing. It's also multi language ones with JavaScript, uh, Ruby, and PHP, and some others. And I wasn't able to find the plugin. That doesn't mean that you can't use it if it's something that you like. And finally, we have Smarty, which is, which is a templating engine that has been around for quite some time. There is a plugin called Smarty for WordPress. Um, it has a lot of the same features that uh, Timber has. Yes. Now, of course, we, we've been told over and over again how JavaScript is the future of WordPress. So we ought to start learning JavaScript. So I personally haven't gotten that far yet, or at least I haven't gotten far like, deep into WordPress that I feel uh, comfortable calling myself in. Pro or anything, but I thought it would only be worthwhile to, to give a couple options for templating engines in JavaScript. We have Dust.js, which is maintained by LinkedIn. Mustache also works for JavaScript. Handlebars is another popular engine. It's actually a fork of Mustache. And I mentioned that um, Mustache doesn't allow any logic. Handlebars kind of loosen that, loosen that up a little bit so it does allow logic in your templates. Underscore JS is basically the templating engine that's used in um, Backbone.js, which is a popular JavaScript framework, or it's the default one. And finally, we have jQuery template. Okay. So I mentioned that I love Twig, and all the examples are going to be done in Twig. So I'm going to kind of dive into some of the features, how it helps you respect separation of concerns, and some of the different uh, the new syntax it has, and all, all the other stuff. So we're going to be using Twig, and also the plugin called uh, Timber. Okay. So this is probably the um, WP query that you're used to. 
it's I've actually never liked this syntax. I've always found it very difficult to understand. I found it very convoluted. It's verbose. In this case, what we're doing is we're, we're pulling the query, we're pulling out the posts, and it, within here we're iterating through it and we have all, all our HTML and everything mixed in. There is a better way. Here, so let me back up a minute. So when we're, when we're um, using a templating engine, we want to typically separate our code into two files. So we have our PHP file here. The job of this is basically to get the data, to perform the business logic of our application. What we're doing is stuffing all the posts into this context variable. Now Timber, Timber has some built-in functions, one of which is get posts which basically takes any of the same arguments that you would use if you uh, with the query. And essentially what we are doing is we take um, our, we find our templates, in this case index.twig. So to back up another for a minute one more time, our templates are always going to be, if we're using twig, they're always going to be dot twig. So this is if we do timber render, we render our twig file. This is what a twig file looks like. As you can see, it's much cleaner. We have some cleaner syntax here. This, this is us just iterating through the posts. Basically, it all, looks almost like HTML. You don't see any PHP tags or any variables being declared. All of the PHP was done in this file here. And over here, we have our HTML. So, as, as I mentioned, it's a lot easier to work in Teams. And I think, just from this one example, you should see how that could really change your workflow. So there's also certain things that we can't do in, in our Twig templates, particularly. If you ever do a variable inside of, your twig templates, inside of your templates in general, if you're using Twig, this is going to throw an error. So you cannot do this. You can't just put in a random function. This is also going to throw an error as well. Um, let me just step back. So Twig does allow you to, it does allow you to use functions, but you need to extend the Twig plugin, or uh, Timber plugin, but Twig as well, you can uh, extend it. That's a little bit out of the scope of this talk. I think if you're just starting out, it's safe to assume that probably, if you have a function you want to use, you probably will not be able to use it. And finally, we can't use our super globals as well. That's also going to throw an error. So, the proper way to do this would be to take our, in our PHP file, that's going to render the template, we're going to use our context variable and stuff each of these into the, var into the variable in, as a uh, multi-dimensional array. Then we just render the template, and um, that's the proper way to do it. That's the twig way. Now let's go over some of the cleaner syntax. Instead of, if you want to echo out a variable, you can't, uh, excuse me, the syntax is going to be different. This is what you're probably used to, open and close PHP tags and then echo. This is how it's done in twig much cleaner in my opinion, um, and you can't argue with the fact that it has significantly less characters than what we have on the first one. This is what you're probably used to for your block syntax, and this is the new toy way of doing it. Again, it's significantly less characters. Um, I think it's much easier to read. If you use objects, um, to, to use an object, we have this arrow syntax. Nothing particularly wrong with it, but this is the new twig way of doing it. I think this is more just sound. If you like the, the other one better, it's, there's nothing wrong with it, but it is what it is. And of course, escaping our HTML. Um, so this is how it looks like the old way with PHP. Of course, uh, WordPress has their escape HTML function as well, but this is the new way. 
And another option, you can actually, with Twig, I know, you can actually set it so that um, all HTML is auto escaped. Okay, the final feature is template inheritance. As I mentioned, it's very similar. If you've used something like, if you've, if you've used any object-oriented program, it's a very similar concept. You, excuse me, you have a parent class, and then you have um, child classes that pretty much take everything that is in the parent class and just extend that. There's two components. You have, number one, your base template, and number two, you have a child template. So, this is what a base template might look like. The thing to pay attention to is the blocks here. We have block title and then block, block content, etc. These are what we're using. These are the parts of the template that can be extended. So, we can just basically reuse what we have here. And if we make a new template, and we'll see this shortly, with these blocks, we can just write a small snippet of code to override the areas that need to be overridden. But at the same time, we don't have to re um, we don't have to rewrite the shared HTML. So this is what a child template might look like. We have um, so here we just make note to extend. I have a typo here. It should be based on twig. But we have um, we extend that, and then all we have to do is take our title and block title, for example, and this changes the title. Our block head. What this is doing here with the parent is saying, okay, take everything in the parent and just add this, so we don't have to rewrite what is already there. And content here, we we have just overrode the content. Okay, so I figure um, we can take a look at a little bit of code. Let's see how Timber or Twig can help us um, refactor and make a uh, prettier looking, give us a prettier looking uh, code base. So this is um, a typical, let's say a typical file that doesn't respect separation of concerns. We have Basically, what, the, what are the issues? Well, first of all, we have our HTML mixed in with a lot of PHP. We're declaring functions. Um, another thing I see that is actually very frustrating too, to work with is you just rendering HTML as a concatenated string. It's extremely difficult to uh, render, to, I'm sorry, to modify this without raising errors because you have to be so aware of the quotes. Um, so that's some, that's a bad thing. And then we also have more HTML and just generally some business logic. So there's a better way we can refactor this. The first thing I notice is these form, there's some, there's some HTML that is repeated. We open the form and then both of them have a button. Really the only difference of these forms is that they have, one of them has a select drop down whereas um, the other does not. So, um, also, well, let's look at the forms. Um, so, can you get those lights? The overhead lights is hard to see. Oh, sure. I, uh, I don't know if there's a way to. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Um, let me see, increase font size. Basically, 
our form based template here. I just put a block for form fields. So that, all we have to do, we can take this input, um, we can take this submit, because that's up, that needs to be on both, um, both templates. So we can reuse that. But then we can go into, so form one, essentially, you can see we just extend form, form.twig, and then I'm just plugging in my two inputs here. And form two does the same thing. Now, um, let me step back too. So we have um, here we have our presentation. Uh, just this is our PHP file here. Um, this basically takes all this is doing is our business logic. We're not outputting any HTML at all. It's all business. It's all business logic. We all, we have here. This is where we decide um, where we want to render. So we have because page. And um, because page uh, dot twig, I'm sorry, page form one and page form two are basically the same thing. We could also use child templates to extend those as well. So here's our page dot twig and page form one, where we're just taking it and all we're doing is including form one dot twig and page form two. All we're doing is including page form two dot twig. But basically, we got to reuse the components. Okay. Well, I hope um, I hope everyone got something out of the talk. I appreciate that everybody came. Um, please consider using a templating engine. I'm hoping that someday WordPress decides to put this in core. I really think it would improve the quality of the WordPress ecosystem. It does have a learning curve. And I understand probably I went through a lot today, so if you didn't grab that all, uh, please don't be discouraged. It's one of those things you got to, like anything really, you have to kind of take it, download it, play with it, make some mistakes, and um, you know, just really see how it works for you. I also encourage you to go ahead and uh, try some of the other uh, templating engines that are out there. So here's uh, any contact information if you don't have a chance to um, ask a question. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to contact me. Thank you. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions. Yes. So are there, do you have any sort of sample, is there a sample uh, WordPress Theme that yeah, oh, what's that's a good question. Point? So, a good, a great place to start if you're a theme developer, particularly, is um, Timber actually has a theme. It's a Tim, uh, I think it's called uh, Timber. I think it's just called Timber, but uh, it's a child theme. It's a fork of underscores. I think that's a good, a good place to start. Um, there are some themes um, I know out there that do use Twig templates. I actually don't know any by name, but for a starter theme, that uh, uh, timber is a good place to start. Yes. How does the template engine work? How does the predefined methods for getting queries and things like that kind of interact with the path? Think about like complex queries and using trainings to cast those things in the Um, that's a good question. I actually don't have the answer to that. I've used um, so. Where I work, my place, we use WP Engine a lot, and they are pretty aggressive on the caching. And I will say I haven't noticed any issues. Um, that doesn't mean that there are no issues, but I, I haven't noticed them personally. Yes. So Twig actually has extended it to allow action hooks. So yes, you can ex you can use action hooks and you can use filters and use Twig templates. Yes, and uh, yeah, that's very definitely a good, good feature of it. So you don't have to go and uh, I'm sorry, Timber extends it, so you don't have to go and reinvent the wheel. Anything else? Great. Well, thanks again. I appreciate uh, your attentiveness. You've been a great audience. Thank you.